All right, well, you know, I've decided, I don't know if you're going to be watching this Darwin's Hamster, but, you know, I, I, he wants to do this as an educational thing for beginners, and I decided to respect that and not make comments, and I'm not even going to try to fit within the rules. I'm just not going to make comments in those videos, but I, it just makes me all the more want to comment on things. Now, the video I've linked here, I'm not attaching my videos to reply again, but you know, for reference, um, the, you know, it's about, he it starts off the program, but it's about, you know, teaching, he's talking about how you have to tell people things in terms they can understand. Now, he uses a good example there of talking to like a network guy or a guy that sets up computers uh, about, you know, how something works. Or maybe it was a database guy. And so, you know, thinking about how he sees the, the network and, you know, describing it from his point of view. Fine, that, that makes sense. But just as a general thing, I mean, I mean, I like a more vertical kind of conversation where people of all levels can take part. Now, in a classroom, you can't necessarily do that, and I can, I can understand. But, I mean, it sort of depends on what habits are being taught how appropriate I think that that is. Now, this main thing of, like, I think the point is that he's going to use this VB.net to, uh, to describe, you know, object-oriented um, programming from the point of somebody that just uses objects, and then, I guess, probably how to create them as well. Um, but he talks about a system where, you know, you, you play to people's preconceived notions. You try to describe, and I just don't believe that works in programming. Programming is too different. You you need to break down and have some really good core metaphors and, and even some new abstractions, you know, that are that are hard to even think in terms of metaphors that come from from uh, various parts of science and logic and, and the history of computing. Um, and, you know, he, he anticipated this nitpick from programmer types, but, I mean, unless you're going to really specifically make a point of, I have nothing against people playing around or even using VB.net for fun or profit, you know, but um, it teaches bad habits. So part of the question is, like, well, if somebody's offering their free education online uh, and it's going to give someone habits so that they you know, just a line cook. I mean, they should at least know that or hear somebody saying, oh, hey, I don't think that, you know, I would want to hear that. And I don't like when, when people try to teach me something by, um, by teach me something else, and then they switch later on, and they say, no, it's really this way. And then, you know, they do that all through school, and they say it's necessary, but I don't, I don't learn as well that way. I, I learn better being told things that I just don't understand because I'm so interested. I'll still listen and the little phrases are interesting. And maybe it pieces together slow, but then it, it seems to really come together better. And I just think programming is something that deserves this kind of um, care. And um, I don't know. Uh, VB.net, you know, and you download that for free and it's this proprietary thing. and Microsoft just locks people in. And I know you can make a living on it, but you know, uh, like, why start people off in that in, in such a locked-in kind of framework? Because it's easy, but so are lots of things. I mean, you know, Python has GUI interfaces, and uh, uh, but I don't mind those. You know, I don't object. It's not like I go over there and make a big deal. Like I really, really think it's terrible. Like, but but you're you're specifically upset about uh, people commenting on these kinds of features. Well, why should your students not have the opportunity? You volunteer. You get what you pay for, students, right? Why can't they have other interested programmers? Um, I mean, all I said in that first video, which definitely turned out to be the kind of comment he didn't want, you know, was um, something about, well, I have a concern that you're not making a distinction between 
you know, the IDE, the development environment and object-oriented programming, it almost made it sound like object-oriented programming is when you have objects on the screen and stuff. And uh, yeah, I kind of object to those things, but I don't know, does everybody have to be taught to be a, a chef, a four-star chef? Well, or five-star or, or whatever. Well, in a way, yeah. You know, you don't have to go that far in your cooking career, but who's to say we shouldn't all learn the art of cooking? And if all we pull off is, you know, rice and beans, maybe most people won't think it's artistic, but maybe we'll have found some flavors that really appeal to us or whatever. I mean, if we're going to end up half-assed, do we have to be taught to be half-assed in the first place? Now, I'm not saying that's what he's doing. But it seems to me, by objecting so much to expertise, uh, that's almost implied. Like, you know, he doesn't want them to know there's a bigger wide, wide world because it's confusing to them. And that's fine, and that's why I'm going to respect it instead of, in, in the sense of not going to interfere with, with the comments in those videos. But on the other hand, it's, it's not the way I think. Um, that's not the way I like to learn. I, I end up learning programming pretty well, and uh, you know I'm self-taught, so it's not my degree. So, um, though I, I have to admit I've ended up having a lot of education, you know, professional conferences, and I have. You know, I'm really taking any classes since I did end up taking Fortran in college after I was already working as a programmer, but pretty much self-taught. Um, you know, also uh, just by having a career and working with other good programmers. So I can say something about the learning process, and I'm, I know that uh, well, I was just thinking back to my own, you know, maybe I'm misstating my own experience. I learned first, I learned 84, I learned AppleSoft Basic, also a Microsoft product. And that seemed pretty good. About four to six months later, something like that, I learned 6502, and uh, I found it impossible to go back. But I moved on to C and other things, and I only went back up at the speed I could understand what it was doing. Right? I did assembly, and then C was nice because I could see how the C turned into assembly, and then I did C++ because I could see how the C++ turned into C. And now I can work in interpreted languages now that they've gotten uh, uh, pretty sophisticated and you could do anything that needs performance in, in C. So I'm not against doing easy things like interpreted language and like a scripting language but um, um, it's really more a comment on, on controlling the, the conversation and comments that much. But anyway I could only go back to video 7, this one I've linked because um, I, did, I couldn't find any more of them, and even in this one, he's talking about somebody so Darwin and hamster. I'm sorry, I don't know the backstory. Maybe you're frustrated for a reason. I don't know. And the last thing you want is me to have a comment because it seems like harping something that already happened. I don't know. I just have a comment, and you know, um, I'm not saying you should let uh, be okay with advanced comments in there. I understand this educational principle. I'm not the person that goes into that section of the library and says you shouldn't have this. You know, I'm not a book burner or a book banner at all or video. But, yeah, I like more vertical learning. I think we all should learn how to be immersed. Um, I like reading. Even when I was young, you just I would read the Scientific American, and I guess you could probably say I never understood it until I was older. After 15 years, I probably didn't understand one article, but I did. There's phrases and terms, and then when I saw them later, I was able to look them up, and then you know, th thoughts come to you, which if you really investigate them, were finally uh, getting something you had read, but you forgot where it came from, and it comes from that. I just believe an immersion in the real deal is the way to go merchant in the real deal. But then again, I think different, differently from other people about programming. I know that. I mean, like, it's not just having the experience. It's like things like pointers. I've had programmers, I've had programmers tell me they thought I was arrogant because I was like, what's confusing about a pointer? Or we'd have a, 
a programmer come for an interview uh, to program in C and have trouble with pointer. What? How could that even be? It's the simplest. It's like you have a bunch of cubby holes, like the mail slots in a hotel, and they have all got a number, and the pointer holds the number that points to where the value is, and if you dereference it, you get the thing. What is? It's one of the most sensible things about the computer. You got memory, and you have a logic circuit that's able to access and do things with it. I mean, but I know I've had people I respect tell me that other programmers find that tricky and it's the same thing with object-oriented I don't by the time the object-oriented languages came along it was like oh god this is exactly it made what I was doing easier because I'd done, been doing similar structures but with pointers to pointers the references of pointers and things and that are get really confusing and um, <clears throat> and take a lot of work to get you know to get as clean as a well, they just aren't as clean as having the language help do that kind of stuff. So it's sort of similar. It's like it's the natural way. Now, I did admit there was a sort of a mind-bending point in my understanding of object-oriented programming when I sort of got the design patterns attitude. Um, and that was sort of early on, but I mean... I, I did an object-oriented design before I did that, and, you know, I mean, I was using some of the patterns, they just are just a description of the kind of patterns you can use, so. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can be wrong about other people, I, I'm mostly talking about how I learn, right, because, um, so I'm not going to go over there, but, yeah, I just like primary sources, and, you know, I like, I, I like learning C from or K and R. It's like, uh, I don't know. Um, is that so wrong? And I, I don't understand them when I read them. You might have to read something like that over and over and over again. I don't know. Um, um, I mean, I learned C like everybody from sample programs initially start playing with it but then when I wondered okay yeah now I see how it's got curly brackets you know I pretty right away went and got KNR which at the time you know was the thing to get I mean there's probably I, I yeah I mean I got design patterns it was confusing I looked at it for years and just kept trying to understand it and you know and right away I understood little things and so I don't know I don't like being um, there's something romantic about that real information to me it's like it feels good to be you know maybe you don't understand it but it's like oh, it feels good people are threatened by it and um anyway I don't like BB.net. I don't like Microsoft products. I think they're damaging. Um, but I made a living programming for them for years, almost a decade, so no aspersions cast. <laughs>